Hi, and welcome to the Sally Tomato YouTube channel. We enjoy bringing you tutorials and other creative videos that teach and inspire. Today's tutorial is a handy little wallet that features several pockets. It has a secure zip closure, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. You'll find zipper pockets as well as several card pockets. I'll show you options to add a wrist strap, but also a chain strap. The name Bella was inspired by the 1997 movie Life is Beautiful, and we're going to make something beautiful. Before we begin the tutorial, be sure to purchase the pattern. You can find the pattern and all the supplies for this project on our website, sallytomato.com, or you can request them at your local quilt shop. Please shop local whenever you can. All the supplies that you need are listed on the back of the pattern cover, as well as a list of helpful notions. Before beginning, please review the recommended fabrics on the back of the pattern cover and the pattern corrections page on our website for any updates. All right. Gather your supplies, cut out all the pieces you need. Remember, you can always pause the video as the steps progress. That way we can sew at your pace. Are you ready to get started? Let's begin. You may find it helpful to label your pieces as you cut them by marking the name of each piece on the wrong side with a removable pen or chalk, or simply download and print the free piece labels sheet that's available on our website. You'll need to cut all your pieces from your main fabric, and there are some optional details that can be cut from a contrast fabric. I'm actually going to use two fabrics as my main fabric. This way you'll be able to see the parts more easily and also it's just a really fun way to use smaller pieces of fabric. You'll also need a piece of fusible interfacing for the exterior and then two smaller pieces of heavy stabilizer. This is going to help give your wallet structure. First, we're going to shape the pieces. Position the corner template A that's found in your pattern in each corner of the wrong side of your main piece A. You'll trace around the outer edge of the template from edge to edge, and then cut along the marked line to round each corner. You'll repeat this step using corner template B to shape the pieces B and piece M, which I've done off camera, and you'll also shape two corners along one long edge of each of the stabilizer pieces. First, center and fuse the interfacing piece M to the wrong side of your main piece A, that's your exterior, and then we'll move on to prepare the pocket zippers. On the wrong side of each piece H, that's your zipper tab, you'll mark a line in from one long edge, and then with wrong sides together, align each raw end of the six inch zippers along the marked line of one zipper tab. So each end of the zippers get a zipper tab. Then you'll top stitch the zipper an eighth inch from the raw ends. Now you could skip the top stitching and use double-sided basting tape to hold the zipper tabs in place. Then you'll fold each zipper tab in half, covering the right side of the zipper, encasing the raw end and then top stitch the tab in place through all the layers. Last step is to trim the zipper tabs even with the zipper tape edges. Let's put the zippers aside and go ahead and mark the bottom corners along the long edge you'll measure in and then mark on the wrong side of your piece C this will be for the exterior pocket, and then draw an angled line from the mark to the adjacent top corners. This is going to angle the edge of your pocket, and then you'll use the corner template B to shape the bottom corners, giving them a curve that will mimic the other curves of the wallet. Then simply cut along the marked lines. We're ready to attach the zipper, but first double check that you have the correct zipper size. We need to use the larger or the number five size zipper. I accidentally used the number three and I had to redo my pocket further down in the tutorial. So just double check that you've got the number five zipper for this step. With right sides up and the zipper pull closed, 
center the long top edge of your piece C, that's the pocket, over the lower half of one of the zipper tape edges. About an eighth inch of the zipper tape should be visible. You'll secure the layers with basting tape and then top stitch following the edge of piece C with an eighth inch allowance using a zipper foot, or you could use a very narrow foot like I'm using here. If you're left-handed, you may prefer to position the zipper so the zipper pull is close to the right, opposite what I'm doing and opposite of the illustrations in your pattern. With right sides together, center the unsewn edge of your piece C zipper unit down from the top short edge of your piece A. Then sew the zipper in place with a narrow seam allowance. And then fold the pocket down, centering the bottom pocket edge just up from the bottom exterior edge. And I went ahead and drew a faint line with a disappearing pen or chalk. Make sure it disappears because you're on the right side of your fabric. And then top stitch an eighth inch from the sides and bottom edge of the pocket. When you're positioning the sides of the pocket, try to keep them straight and even with the narrower bottom edge of the pocket. This is going to allow a little extra space in the pocket when you use it. All right, now fold the ends of the long zipper tape at an angle to the wrong side. Keep the zipper pull out of the way. With the zipper right side up, slide a short end of one of the zipper extensions, that's piece I, wrong side up, about a half inch under the zipper end. You'll sew across the zipper ends with a quarter inch allowance, securing them to the zipper extension. Repeat this step to attach and top stitch the remaining piece I, that's your zipper extension, to the opposite end of the zipper. Then open the zipper completely. Next we need to mark our piece A. We'll need to mark both sides. So the pattern states marking the right side first, but you can certainly mark the interfacing side first as long as they're both marked correctly. So on the interfacing side, draw a vertical line down the center and then on your right side, you'll mark center along the long edges of piece A. Now with right sides up, place the open top end of the zipper below the top edge of your piece A and then fold each zipper tape under at a 90 degree angle in the opposite direction of each other. The edge of the zipper tape will be wrong side up and aligned with the raw top edge of your piece A. Hold these ends in place with a sewing clip or two and try to keep the zipper teeth close together just below the top edge. This will allow the zipper to close more securely when you're using the wallet. Align both zipper tape edges along the raw edge of your piece A. The pocket zipper, when it's closed, should be near the end of the wallet zipper without the pull. At the bottom edge, flip the zipper and the pull end up toward the middle of piece A, forming a 90 degree fold in the zipper tape. Again, secure this well with sewing clips. You can also cut little tiny snips into the zipper tape, only an eighth inch long at the most at the curved corners. This is going to help them lay flat. It's not necessary and I prefer to not clip my zipper tape. That helps keep a very crisp, nice curve in the zipper tape when the wallet is completed. Sew the zipper in place beginning about 5 8 inch from the top center mark and then you'll sew with a quarter inch seam allowance without stitching into the folded under zipper tape. So Take a peek before you start stitching, then end your stitching about 5 8 inch in from the bottom center mark. Also, move the zipper pull out of the way as you sew. You'll repeat this same step for the second half of the zipper, this time beginning at the bottom edge and stitching to the top edge. Be sure to use a zipper foot or a narrow foot to help maintain the narrow seam allowance. Fold the seam allowance to the wrong side at the seam. Then cut 
very small notches into the piece A corner seam allowances so the layers remain flat with the zipper tape. Then top stitch on the right side with an eighth inch allowance from the seam. Begin and end your top stitching even with the seam stitching. Or if you prefer, you can certainly glue the seam allowance in place in a later step. On the right side of the wallet back, install each mini decorative strap connector in from the sides and down from the top seam. And those measurements are listed in your pattern. I've added small pieces of heavy stabilizer to help support the strap connectors. Also check that the D-ring of the hardware swings away from the seam and the top stitching. Now the figure in your pattern is showing the wallet without the right side top stitching. I'm going to use the same measurements, but I'll be measuring from the seam edge and not the zipper tape edge. Let's set the wallet aside for a minute and go to our interior card pockets. You'll top stitch the top edges of the ID pocket and the card pockets, both A and B. And then we can attach the ID pocket with right side up, center the pocket E, that's the ID pocket, up from the bottom edge of one piece D, that's the interior zipper pocket. You'll top stitch the sides and the bottom edge with an eighth inch allowance. Our pattern tester Ivana recommends adding the heavy stabilizer pieces in at this point. This helps support the card pockets as well. With right sides up, position the bottom edge of the card pocket A in from a short edge of the piece B, that's the interior, and the shaped ends are even with the piece B long edges. Top stitch an eighth inch from the short bottom edge of your pocket A. With right sides up, position one card pocket B over the attached pocket A, nesting into the indent of the pocket A and aligning the sides. Then you'll top stitch the sides and bottom edge and a vertical center line. So now on the remaining interior, you'll add the remaining pocket A and pocket B. Next, we're going to create an indent along the two long edges of our interior piece. So on both long, wrong side edges of the piece B, you'll follow your pattern to mark and then cut out a little indent at those two center areas. This indent is going to allow the zipper to open and close smoothly and you're ready to assemble the interior zipper pocket. This is where I caught my mistake. I needed to use the number three zipper for the interior pocket, so make sure you have the number three zipper. With right sides up, center the long top edge of your piece D over the lower half of the remaining zipper. Again, about one eighth inch of the zipper tape should be visible between the zipper teeth or the coil and the pocket piece D. Secure those layers with basting tape and then top stitch an eighth inch from your piece D top edge using a zipper foot or a narrow foot. And you'll repeat the step to attach the remaining piece D, that's the pocket piece, to the opposite half of the zipper tape. Now mark in from each outer corner of the pocket unit and draw an angled line connecting the adjacent marks. You're going to cut off that little corner along the marked line. An option is to install a metal handmade label on piece D that would be opposite the ID pocket. And then you can center the handmade label below the zipper and I'm adding a piece of cork fabric to cover the prongs because I want to be able to use my little zipper pocket and covering the prongs will make it easier to slip items in and out of that pocket. All right, now we're ready to attach that interior zipper pocket. Mark a line centered between the two short edges on the right side of your interior piece B. Then you'll mark another line centered 
and a quarter inch from each side of that center line. So you'll have three marks, a long, a short center line, and then a longer outer lines. Just a quick note, check that your interior zipper pocket closes in the same direction as the exterior pocket. I probably should have double checked and rotated my interior pocket. With right sides up, position one piece D edge along one longer marked line. You'll top stitch along the bottom edge of the piece D or the pocket. You can certainly use double-sided basting tape to hold the pocket in place, and you may find a Teflon foot helpful to move your fabric smoothly as you sew. You'll repeat this same step, attaching the remaining piece D edge to the opposite longer line. Now fold the entire interior unit wrong size together and simply top stitch the zipper pocket sides with an eighth inch allowance. And I'm reorienting the piece so you can see a little bit better. Now we can complete the interior. Position each stabilizer piece N on the wrong side of the interior. The firmness of the stabilizer is going to add extra support to your wallet and be sure to allow a quarter inch from the outer edges and the curved corners. And I do recommend gluing these pieces in place so they stay permanently. This next step is optional and it's a great detail. We're going to top stitch both long edges of the contrast piece K, that's the D-ring connector, and then thread the connector through the D-ring, fold the connector wrong sides together so the short ends are just offset, and then we'll move on to assembling our wallet. Fold the top zipper end up away from piece A, allowing the seam allowance to fold to the wrong side. Hold the zipper out of the way with sewing clips, and then if you are adding the connector, slide the raw ends of the D-ring connector under the zipper extension at the top edge. The hardware should extend above your gusset or zipper edge. Then glue or tape the connector in place, and I did find that I prefer the D-ring connector on the zipper end when the zipper is closed, so I'm placing my connector at the end without the zipper pull. And because I top stitched along the zipper seam, my zipper is at the outer edge, so it may look a little different from the figure in the pattern. Now top stitch between the zipper tape to form a little bit of a gusset. Align the stitching between the top stitching on your piece A and repeat for the bottom edge gusset. Another option is to insert a Chicago screw or a rivet to add additional security to the D-ring connector. Our pattern tester Ivana had another great idea. She added a second Chicago screw at the opposite end of the gusset edge to complete a symmetrical look. Fold all the edges of the piece A and the zipper to the wrong side of piece A. Now my edges are already top stitched, so I'll just fold the zipper ends. Be sure to use sewing clips or basting tape or basting glue to hold those edges in place, and then glue the wrong side of the zipper extensions to the wrong side of the piece A. Then trim those short ends of the zipper extensions so they meet nice and smooth at the center area of your wallet. With wrong sides together, place one half of the interior piece B over the main piece A, aligning the edges. Hold the layers together with basting tape or glue, and then secure the edges with sewing clips as well. Bring the zipper pull to the edge of piece A so they are flat, but the pull doesn't get caught in the final seam. And then align the interior edges to just cover the seam stitching and also check how the interior fits. Top stitch with an eighth inch allowance following the stitching on the exterior piece A. Be sure to begin and end at the gusset stitching and stitch slowly, being careful that the zipper is not caught in the stitching. And one note I found is 
in a tight area, you may find it easier to pivot and then stitch in reverse, stitching out of that tight area and then pivot and continue stitching. Then you'll repeat the steps for the remaining half of the interior and exterior. It helps to do one half at a time because the interior is smaller than the exterior to create a smooth fit when the wallet is closed. Now fold the wallet with the card pockets right side together, gently bringing the zipper pull up from the wallet edge to close. A fun decorative option is to use a zipper pull with a tassel cap attached right to it. Be sure to follow your pattern and also refer to our video tutorial on making a tassel using tassel cap hardware to add this great detail. A wrist strap is a great addition and an option for your wallet. Thread the contrast piece L through the swivel hook, then join the ends by placing the short ends right sides together and perpendicular to each other, overlapping the ends. Then sew a diagonal seam from corner to corner and trim the seam allowance to a quarter inch wide. You can press the seam open and top stitch on each side of the seam. I find it easier to trim the seam allowance after I've pressed the seam open and top stitched. Now with wrong sides together, fold the strap in half along the length. You'll top stitch an eighth inch from each long side, moving the hardware out of the way as you sew. Fold the strap against the hardware and then top stitch the strap to itself a little distance away from the hardware. Another option, if you prefer to skip the top stitching on the strap, install a Chicago screw or a rivet a half inch from the hardware through all the layers. Then simply attach the swivel hook to the, your D-ring on your wallet. Clip a pretty chain strap to the mini strap connectors and you're ready to go. I hope you're excited to use your new wallet. You could make several and each would be very different. Eliminate a pocket, use a wrist strap instead of a shoulder strap, use different hardware, zipper pulls, even add a tassel. I think Bella would make a great gift for someone special as well. We encourage you to share photos of your completed projects using hashtag Sally Tomato and Bella Wallet Pattern on our social media. If you found this tutorial helpful, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe. That way you'll always know when a new video is here. I hope you'll check out our website for our complete pattern line for more inspiration. And as always, thank you for sewing with me today and watching. Have a great making day.